fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Voyager Class Gamer Edition Starscream from the Transformers Studio Series from Hasbro. I just found this at my local Target. It's been available online for a while but I decided to wait and I was actually able to take advantage of the sale that Target has right now where you save $20 on toys when you spend $75. So definitely advise looking for these. My target was kind of rearranging the aisles and putting the new tags out and things. So hopefully they should be getting these in soon. And hopefully you'll also be able to take advantage of the deal if you can. Uh, but yeah, some nice artwork of Starscream in robot mode here on the front. We still have the plastic free packaging. So you can still reach in and touch the figure. No plastic window. I feel like they should be getting back to plastic windows by now. I mean, it's such a small area. I feel like just go ahead and throw a plastic window on there for us, but it is a nice solid cardboard. I will say that for it. Over here, a little bit closer view of that same artwork of Starscream. Over here on this side, you have a wider shot, pretty much the full body there. Not really anything going on on the bottom. On the top, you have the War for Cybertron logo and spinning it around to the back. We have some nice product shots of the robot mode and the vehicle mode. And then it has the little backdrop that's included, which we'll take a look at. So I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the packaging here, and we'll take a closer look. Here is Starscream with the backdrop that comes included. It says Gamer Edition Transformers over here with a little D-pad. If we move him out of the way, you can kind of see it almost kind of looks like a haunted house or something on Cybertron. Just kind of the feel I'm getting from this over here. But it's obviously just some kind of rundown part of Cybertron. It's been a while since I played this game, so I really don't remember if this was the focus of a level or not. But just some, you know, dilapidated city streets here on Cybertron. But he does look pretty cool and fits well in the space. Here is Starscream out of the packaging, and he looks pretty cool. I have to be honest, the main reason I didn't pick this up right away was when I saw the pictures online... I wasn't that impressed with them. I thought the one they did back in the day for the Generations line looked pretty good. Now that was a Deluxe class instead of a Voyager class. But I always thought that one was perfectly fine. And, and this one looked very chunky. And I don't know, just something about it looked off in both the robot mode and the vehicle mode. But having it in hand, I actually like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I like the kind of deep maroon and the dark navy blue, kind of more subtle, subdued colors, which I think makes sense for the War for Cybertron aesthetic. Everything on the planet is kind of drab and it's wartime, so it makes sense not to have as vibrant of a color scheme. And I think that looks pretty cool. Um, the canopy up here doesn't look as bad in person either. I did see some pictures where someone kind of panel lined just with black these little grooves that are in here and it really did look a lot sharper i'm considering doing that i'm really not sure i don't really like to mod my toys all that often but that's something subtle that i think maybe i could do and i really do like the look of it it just makes this have a little bit more definition and something that i kind of wish hasbro had just done because otherwise it's just this kind of big transparent transparent orange piece it doesn't look terrible, but I think I've seen it with the, the panel lines, and it does actually look a lot sharper. You have these two little pieces here on the, like, shoulder pad areas. These are kind of weird. These actually come separate in the box, and you have to snap them on yourself. So I guess you're supposed to wing them out to the side for the robot mode, and then kind of click them like this for transformation. If you like the look of this better for robot mode, you absolutely can just leave it like that. You don't have to wing them out to the side. I think it's just to give it a little bit of variety. Uh, the head sculpt, though, I really, really like the head sculpt. You have that kind of navy blue plastic there for the head. The eyes are painted very nicely. The silver for the face. Just everything about the head sculpt I like a lot. I think they did a really good job with that. Um, otherwise, getting into articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so you can spin side to side no problem. Look down a little bit. Look up really far, which is nice. And you can kind of tilt side to side ever so slightly but not a ton you have a nice rotation here in the shoulder as well as a hinge out to the side nice mushroom peg for the bicep joint you have double jointed elbows which will be utilized for the transformation but definitely can be utilized in robot mode and work really well you have a wrist swivel here over on this side uh, you still have the wrist swivel but of course you can pop this off as is the gimmick for this line and he does come with one of these weapons. I'm assuming this is some kind of sniper rifle or something like that. And you can go ahead and peg that on if you want it to look like the weapon is integrated into his arm, just like in the game. 
I will say that for him it looks a little weird because the arm's kind of thin and the gun is really long and thin. So I don't shockingly like that as much. I loved it for all the others. But the nice thing about this, if I plug the arm back on, and it kind of fits in this little channel pretty nicely and can peg in pretty good, it does have a little peg on the bottom. So if you just want him to hold it, you can absolutely do that too. And because of the way the hands are molded, it almost kind of looks like he has a trigger finger there. And you can kind of bring this over and put the other hand underneath, which is kind of something you would do with a sniper rifle. Let me get this over here. There we go. And I think that pose just kind of looks a little bit more natural. I think him holding it works a little better. Um, you can, of course, still mix and match. So if you have any of the other figures... I will pull the arm off, and where did I put it? This is the... What did I put the cannon for? All right, I guess I'm missing his, but let's go ahead. We'll grab Bumblebee's gun. So if you have any of these other blasters, they will, of course, work to just peg on here. Now, the color scheme is a little different, but other than that, you can mix and match all the blasters from the other action figures in this line. Everything from the Gamer Edition has one of these weapons. So you can see this one does not have a peg that it can just be held, but this one does, which I think is a nice touch. Honestly, I'll probably just leave Starscream's arms on all the time, just because I like the look of that better. So it's nice to know you have options, which is pretty cool. I appreciate that. Uh, getting on to the rest of the articulation, you do have a waist swivel. It is a little hindered because of the fact that this nose cone section Hangs down a little over the crotch, so it will kind of hit into these really massive hips. I mean, he's got some pretty chunky hips, but he can kick pretty far forward and pretty far back before he hits into the backpack here and can kick really far out to the side. So really nice range of motion there on the hips. And then he's got a thigh swivel under that. Little over 90 degrees there in the knee. And then you have ankle tilt. I don't think he has any front to back. Technically, this little toe can waggle, <laughs> but that's really about it. He doesn't really have any front to back motion, but you can still get him in some cool poses and the ankle tilt goes a long way. And yeah, overall, I like this guy quite a bit. Uh, backpack, I feel like, is pretty compressed. The wings have a little bit of movement if you like them more kind of straight out, or if you like them at like a little bit of a 45. I kind of like them at a 45, that's how I have them here, but... Yeah, backpack compresses pretty nicely, doesn't really get in the way of anything. I mean, that's not causing any issues with the waist swivel, it's this piece here on the front. But yeah, overall, I definitely like his robot mode a lot more than I thought I was going to. And just for fun, we'll bring in some of the others here. So we have Voyager Prime, we have Voyager Megatron, and then we have Deluxe Bumblebee just to kind of give you a sense of scale and the others that are available in the Gamer Edition line so far. Uh, Cliff Jumper and forgetting the name of the Decepticon car are also available. <laughs> so that makes him, what, sixth in the line so far? So definitely building up a roster here. I'm almost 100% positive. In fact, I think we've seen leaks already in the listings for... Thundercracker and Skywarp repaints of this guy. That's what they do. They always do that for the Seekers. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, definitely building up quite the roster. So before we get into transformation, a couple of things. Barricade was the Decepticon's name I could not come up with. And I also wanted to show off this giant mace that Starscream has. It's quite impressive. This section here is painted in this really nice purple. And then you have this shaft down here. And of course, he can just hold this in his hand. It is quite the whopper of an accessory. And I also wanted to show off how on the back you can store these. So you have two peg holes here. You can kind of peg this into one of them. Well, you're supposed to be able to. It doesn't want to cooperate right now. There we go. And then the other one could peg in over here really don't want to come on there we go so you can store them there on the back i think they look a little goofy but you definitely can store them there which is always nice so although they don't really seem to want to stay in there it feels like i had to kind of fight 
to get them in there. But anyway, let's go ahead. Let's get into transformation now. All right, so we're going to start off by coming around to the back of the figure, and the entire backpack section is going to flip down and kind of accordion out and just kind of hang out here. Uh, you're going to... Now, this is a little weird the way this is done. You can kind of open these up. Now, you can see that these want to constantly move. It seems like whenever I try to do anything with the backpack, they want to move, but you can flip these sections down. And the directions tell you not to do this yet, but you have these little tabs here and they kind of fit into these little notches right there. So if you try to move this middle piece past them, it really doesn't like that and you have to kind of stretch it out. So there's not really a perfect way to do it. Um, so you might have to kind of pull these out to the side a little bit, which I don't like to do because I feel like that puts stress on that. But you have to get it past those pegs somehow. So not a great way to do that. But then you're going to flip this section out again from there. You're going to take these little wings and you're going to flip these around 180 and they will come to rest against each other down there. Then you're going to flip this back and spin this around as you do so. So you can either try to push this past or you can rotate it around the other way, whichever you prefer. And then you're going to want to put the wings straight out if you had them at a 45. And then just kind of close this back up. And then that is the backpack section pretty much done. We're going to let it hang there for the moment. We are going to come around to the front here, kind of straighten out the head. We're going to push these sections in. We are going to lift this up as this pegs into these two pegs here on the front. Then we are going to open up this section and bring this out and push the nose cone piece around like that. Then you're going to grab this whole red piece that the head is connected to right here. And this is going to flip up like this. And then you can see that there's another hinge right here. So we will flip the head up like so. So you can see the hinge there. Then rotate the head 180 degrees. And then this whole section will rotate down and into the chest. And then this will close up. And then once you have that, this part can be a little tricky. So you can see here that there are these little nubbin tabs and they're going to fit in here. I find it's kind of annoying. Like it's not too bad here. You push this all the way up and that kind of clicks into place and that clicks up. But when you're trying to transform it back, you have to be a little careful because if you just kind of pull down on this or pull down here, I don't want to put stress on this area here. So you almost kind of have to like use a nail to kind of lift this up and click that out of there which can be annoying to kind of lift that. You have to get that, that tab out of there. It's not a huge deep tab, which is nice. It just kind of keeps it in place for the vehicle mode. But when you're transforming it back, you have to be careful to kind of pop that out and not put too much stress on anything in this area here. Uh, next, we're going to come to this section here. You can see there's a couple of pins and hinges. So we're going to bring this down. We're going to uh, swivel the arms up like this. Then we are going to utilize the double elbows, but probably not in the way you anticipate. This one's going to come down, and then this one is going to come up like that. So you're going to do kind of a Z like that. Instead of actually like folding them on top of each other, you're going to make a little Z here. So flip this up again, bring this down and up, and then we're going to flip this down. And then you're actually going to bring this in. And it almost looks like this isn't going to clear. When I first looked at this, I really didn't think that was going to go in. But if you just push it in, it totally will. And it'll fl uh, flip up and fit into that space like that. And then you just rotate these at the bicep swivel. And you can see that there's a tab here and a tab slot here. The other thing is, if I can actually show this... Right here, you can kind of see there's a tab, and there's a little indentation right there, if I can show that off, right there on the forearm. So you kind of want to push this up, make sure this goes up, and then swivel this around until that kind of tabs in. If you come back up here, you can kind of see down inside there, and you have to you have to give it a little bit to get it up in there. And then when you come back around, these will kind of tab in, but they'll almost feel like they want to kick out a little bit. 
that's fine because these are really just going to rest underneath there. It's really just to tuck them up underneath. So I would say it's probably more important to make sure they're clicked all the way in this way than they are actually tabbed into each other. So there we go. Uh, this point, we will come down to the legs. Make sure if you have any ankle tilt engaged that you straighten that out and then fold in the tiny little toes. You're going to flip open this section here and it's actually going to come around and you can see that there's a tab slot and a tab right there. And that is just going to tab in. So we will do the same over here on that side. And then you're going to grab the whole leg and it's going to pop forward or kind of outward. And sometimes it's easier to like, well, you can't actually do it once it's been pegged in. So uh, you can see when you're utilizing the knee, <clears throat> excuse me, the knee kind of has this little tab here. So sometimes it's easier to kind of disengage that and then you can slide this out. But just, you know, don't make the same mistake I almost made there where you tab this in and then try to bend the knee because that does not work. So this tab is also going to have to slide into this notch here. So when you bring this down and you'll feel it kind of click into place, it doesn't go any further than this. It seems like it should slide further, but that's where it stops. And then you can go ahead and peg that part in. So kind of bend it at the knee and that makes it easier to flip this out. And then you can bring this up and drop that in there. Which it doesn't want to cooperate now. There you go. You'll hear kind of a nice click. And then that goes in there. And then you might think that these are going to peg into each other, but they don't. They just kind of hang out like this. The entire backpack section is going to drop down. And you can see that there are slits right there and there. And that is for these tabs right here and here. So you just drop this back and then this will peg into the feet or the back of the feet. And there you go. That is the vehicle mode fully transformed. I'm so sorry. I did forget one crucial detail. This tiny little flap here will rotate down and kind of become like a back wing. I don't even really know why this is here. I got to be honest. This is, I don't know why it just does nothing, but it's here. Um, it's okay. Honestly, when I looked at this, I felt like there was a lot of open space, especially in this section here. And I thought I must've transformed it wrong because I feel like this should push down further and integrate more and cover this space, but it doesn't. That's what the back of the box looks like. That's what the directions show. Um, I don't hate it. I, I have to say that. Like, it has grown on me. But this is kind of when I saw the pictures online first, this is why I didn't like this that much. Because it just doesn't feel finished. I mean, the hands are hanging out under here, which I guess isn't a problem. But they seem very visible. And this is kind of extended out. And there's all this empty space here. And I feel like this should somehow either drop down further or this should compress inward or something like that. I don't know. I don't mind the back section here. I think this all works. You have the feet. They have uh, blast effect compatibility. So let me see if I have something here I can utilize. So if you have like one of these crazy giant blast effects, you could pop that in there. Let me see. Do I have another one handy? I don't think so. I have a smaller one, which is going to look ridiculous. But, you know, you can make it look like he's blasting off. I do appreciate that. I think that's really cool. So I appreciate that. And I don't mind them as thrusters. I think that works. This little section here, I think that's cool. I like the way that it swivels around, you know, so that it's different from... Because I think the original one, you just kind of moved the whole piece around. I like this. If you want, you can even kind of angle them. It's up to you. If you want them all the way up, you can. If you want to angle them a little bit, you have a nice option there. And I think that's really smart, the way they just swivel around and come together. They don't even they don't even tab together. They don't need to, honestly. It works really well, nice and seamless. Decepticon symbol there, very nicely painted. The wings have really nice Decepticon symbols as well. Of course, I do wish the wings were just a little bit bigger. I don't mind them being angled like this. I think that's correct for the game, and I think that's a neat design. Just wish they were a little bit bigger. Like I said, these are almost superfluous. I don't really know what they're doing. And I don't mind the nose cone. Again, I just I feel like it's mostly this section here that just feels a little incomplete. Plus, this is all open. I can see the arms under there. 
Um, if you want, you can kind of mitigate this a little bit by maybe pegging in one of the weapons or something that hides it slightly, but uh, you can also peg them in up here, which looks pretty cool. They also have the uh, giant mace, which they show pegging on like this, which I think looks kind of ridiculous, but it does kind of hide this section, so... You know, maybe that's an option. So again, I don't hate it. I definitely don't. But I do feel like this area in particular here feels very unfinished and just doesn't look correct. Fine with this. Fine with all of this. Wish the wings were a little bigger. But again, I don't hate it. It just, it feels like it could be better. So... It is what it is. I mean, I definitely think we'll see it repainted as Thundercracker and Sideswipe. Sideswipe? Thundercracker and Skywarp. I don't think we'll see it repainted as Sideswipe. Uh, I think maybe just Sideswipe's coming from Gamer Edition. Maybe that's why he's on my mind. Uh, but in any case, uh, yeah. Like I said, I don't hate it. But I definitely think it has room for improvement. Uh, I don't have the other one handy. I wish I did. But I kind of remember that vehicle mode being a little bit tighter and, and more compact but again i could be misremembering it if i remember i'll try to put a picture of it here i'll look online um but yeah it's it's okay i just don't think it's perfect overall i like starscream a lot more than i thought i was going to but he's definitely not perfect i really like the color scheme i like the kind of more muted color palette i think it definitely fits the kind of like dystopian uh, run-down Cybertron battlefield that they're going for here from the game. I think that's really nice. Uh, I really like that he can hold his weapon. I appreciate that they still have the gimmick of it being integrated into the arm if you prefer that look, but I think for this weapon it definitely looks a lot better with him just holding it, so I like that you have both options available to you. Uh, this giant club thing, it's kind of neat, but to me that's just kind of a superfluous accessory. It's not really doing anything for me. Um, the transformation is a little weird. I really don't like the way you have to kind of force that part of the backpack forward past those two little tabs. I feel like over time that's really going to cause stress and cause them to kind of, you know, fall out to the side. I already feel like I'm seeing it a little bit. Like, you can see how that's not as tight together as it used to be because I have to kind of, like, force it past those tabs. And I don't really know a way around it. I mean, I guess if I technically, like, swivel this around and then pull it out and swivel it back, I could try um, but it just seems like some, something that they could have done a little bit better with the design there. Um, overall, I like the way the robot mode looks. Like I said, I really like the way the backpack compresses. I think that works really well. Um, the robot mode is pretty good. The vehicle mode, on the other hand, feels a little unfinished, definitely in the kind of midsection where there's a lot of gaps and things, and the, the arms just kind of hang there in plain sight underneath. And, I don't know, I just feel like it could be a little bit more cohesive. The back end of it, I think, looks good. Using the feet as the thrusters and having them be compatible with the blast effect ports, I think, is a really nice touch. So, there's a lot here that I like. There's a few things I don't. So, overall, I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a good figure. I have a positive look on, on the whole. But, you know, it's definitely not as perfect as it could be. Am I going to want to buy this two more times as the other two Seekers? I don't know. Um... That's the only thing. Like, I don't know if the mold is fantastic enough to have three of it. I like having one of it, and it looks good as Starscream. I guess we'll have to see what kind of paint jobs the other two get. I think that's mostly going to be what sells me on it or not. Uh, also, it would be nice if the other two came with different weapons. I just think that would be uh, nice to get some variety so you can mix and match and not have them all have the same kind of sniper rifle, but only time will tell with that. So, um, yeah, I think it's worth checking out, especially if you can find it on sale um, for whatever reason, I think on Hasbro's website, these are $34.99 because they're Voyagers. Target is selling them for $29.99, so $5 less. And then on the app, they're selling them for $27.99, so $2 even more off of that. And when I was in the store, um, it's not, it's not available online, but when I was in the store, uh, they price matched their own website, so... I got it for $27.99, and I was still able to utilize that $20 off of $75, which I think is going until the end of the weekend. So, you know, I was able to get this thing for like $20 bucks by the time all was said and done. And for that price, I love it. I mean, that's great. Um, you know, just having him like this on a shelf, I think, is going to look really cool. I just, uh, 
like I said, the vehicle mode is not the best, but I'll just display him in robot mode and he looks pretty good. I definitely do like having him upscaled as a Voyager as opposed to a Deluxe. I will say that was definitely the right decision there. So yeah, overall, he's good. He's just not phenomenal. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.